I thought I might record a few thoughts on what it means when I say that ISIS-2 implements a model that merges what people call state machine replication, or Paxos, with the original virtual synchrony model used in the original ISIS toolkit. This is a fairly technical question, and in fact, a little video like this isn't a good way to explain it without slides, and I didn't feel like integrating those into a Skype video. And so what I'm going to do instead is just say a few words, and I'm hoping that they'll motivate you to read the relevant materials, which consist of two papers. One is a paper written by myself with Dahlia Malky at Microsoft Research and Robert von Renesse here at Cornell, and the other uh, is a paper that will be coming out in the IEEE Computer Special Issue on CAP in the January-February 2012 period, and that was written jointly with Dan Friedman, uh, Chi Huang, and Patrick Dell. And in this work, uh, what we did was to look at the performance choices that one faces in building a distributed system. What we find is that the end user who's building an application or using an application benefits from strong consistency guarantees. And these guarantees need to have an explanation, which in the case of systems like ISIS takes the form of a model. So when I say model here, what I really mean is a mathematically sound description of the events that can occur while a system is running. And the particular events we're concerned with have to do with changing in the set of replicas, new replicas join or leave or fail, and uh, data being updated, and data being read. Replicas of the data being modified, and some scheme of accessing the replicas. There have traditionally been two sort of schools of thought in how to do this. The original one uh, by Leslie Lamport was called State Machine Replication. It was popularized by a tutorial. Fred Schneider, my colleague, wrote the tutorial. It's a wonderful thing to read. And uh, the Paxos protocols, when they came out, were an implementation of the state machine replication model that provide a way to do updates and reads, and also to reconfigure the group, change the membership. Virtual synchrony, which was introduced as a model after state machine replication, but first became widely used in terms of protocols well before Paxos came out, um, probably five years earlier. So virtual synchrony uh, also has a model. Uh, it's, a, it's a very similar model, actually. It talks about membership changes and updates. The main difference, actually, is that virtual synchrony factors out the membership management and runs that in a separate service, a group management service, which actually can be implemented by the same processes, but it's conceptually a separate service, and then treats the groups as entities that are told what to do by the group membership service, in the sense of being told, please add member D to the group ABC. Please drop member B. It has crashed. Things like that. So the group management service plays those kinds of roles, and it imposes a consistent picture on membership. And it turns out that having this information simplifies the protocols that are used in these systems. What we've done recently with Dahlia and Robert Van Renesse and I is to merge the two models and to develop a version of Paxos in which the membership role of Paxos is factored out into a group management service, just as I did in the old versions of ISIS, and in which the protocols that have to be built as a result run under conditions where membership isn't changing. This turns out to be a, a very good thing to do, and we end up with a faster version of Paxos than if you compare this approach with the standard way of doing membership changes, dynamic membership, uh, with the standard Paxos protocol, in the sense that the typical Paxos update is faster in our scheme because there are steps the typical one does that we can skip because we push those steps off into the membership service. It's a technical benefit. Um, we're able to still support the virtual synchrony protocols too, and what we end up with are a general overarching story in which we have groups, membership changes that are dynamic, and those events form what are called epochs, or membership views, in which uh, the members of the group know who the members are. Everyone sees the same data in a consistent way. And then they can implement protocols. And the protocols we support are the ISIS-SEND protocol. It's a, it's a FIFO protocol. 
We have a causally ordered send protocol, a totally ordered send protocol, and finally we have something called safe send, which is exactly Paxos. And when I say exactly, what I mean is that it has the identical semantics and a very similar implementation, but one that's optimized to take advantage of this restructuring in which the membership service runs separately and isn't part of the protocol per se. And we get better performance that way. Uh, the two papers I told you about, one of them, the one with Dahlia and Robert, described this model in some detail. And by the way, I should say that that's also chapter A in the new version of my guide to reliable distributed systems from Springer Verlag. And the other the paper coming out in IEEE Computer that I mentioned earlier in the January-February 2012 issue, uh, also available from download uh, from my site, um, explains the performance implications of these choices and also illustrates a particular setting in which there's a, a big benefit to choosing carefully, namely uh, applications that do ambitious kinds of replication and need very, very fast response time in what's called the first tier of cloud computing systems. There's another video that explains a little bit more about this.